Um, so it's no secret that I try to play solo guitar stuff in the sense that, uh, you know, more of a polyphonic approach where you play multiple parts at the same time in order to, you know, deceive the listener into thinking there's more than one person playing, maybe. Um, and I know that there's a lot of frustrations that are uh, associated with that, and I know that a lot of you guys must be feeling them, because I know I've been feeling them for, uh, for years now. Uh, but I think I can help a little bit. So in this next series of lessons, I'm going to try to talk about how to, you know, break free of the shackles, if you will. And um, I guess the best place to start would be a genre that would allow you to start analyzing your playing and what you're doing better uh, in order to focus in on the groove and focus in on independence of feel and, and all these things. So we're, we're going to mess around with some reggae today. Uh, I'm going to set my metronome to... Uh, you know, moderately slow tempo, probably around 70, just so we can really groove out to the uh, to the reggae. Um, you know, let's put it at 69, because why not? Uh, anyway, when we are doing what we are doing, what you need to notice is this. With reggae, the chord part is always on the upbeat, or on the offbeat, rather, on the and of a chord, so if it's a, or of a beat, so if it's one and two and three and four and. <clears throat> now I'm just going to use a progression of, of A minor to G major triads. Uh, here's the the beat. Like I said, it's at uh, 69 BPM. Cause why the hell not? It's amusing. So one, two, three chords. Notice I'm adding like little dead notes in there, little, uh, you know, just rhythmic devices to make it a little bit more lively. Now say you want to, want to add a bass line to that so you're not just playing kink, kink, and sounding just, you know, like an insignificant person just doing that alone. Uh, in order to put it against some kind of rhythmic background, you want to play a bass line. So say the bass line is this, uh, one, two, three, four, one. Together, I'll go back to the original bass line. of course the off beats going here and then noticing okay I'm cataloging in my mind what's on an off beat right so everything in the guitar part is only off beats it's only on the end of every beat so if it were written as eighth notes it would be eighth note rest eighth note eighth note rest eighth note eighth note rest eighth note for you know to infinity um, then what I do is I listen or, or try to analyze where the bass line is falling. So I know that the, the bass line for the A minor chord is one, two, three, four, one, two, and three. I'm playing two and three. So I know that the and is going to be simultaneous with the chord because the chords happen on every end. So I got to go. respect to the second chord, I'm playing the syncopated sort of figure in the bass. Four, three, four, so it's... That's the, uh, the resulting part. Now, 
they're not hitting at the same time, but I get a good sense of where I have to kind of squeeze that chord in between the bass notes, you know. <laughs> So when you combine the two together, you really get a nice dynamic feel. And notice that I'm also muting the bass a little bit so it, so it sounds it has that reggae kind of... And the chords are very crisp and staccato. So independence of feel there. That's pretty much that. Um, the other thing I wanted to discuss with respect to just that uh, for now is what I'm doing there. I'm adding like, like a little bit of a, a lot of dead notes and sort of, you know, muted plucks and whatnot. Uh, I do that sort of instinctively at this point. Um, I don't really think I ever thought of how to incorporate them, but uh, they'll just start happening and I think that that's really what kind of keeps it more lively. If I were just going... Sounds very academic. You know, it doesn't, it doesn't have that, that, that ballsiness that you really want. You want... Wait. Or, uh, excuse me. Just one last thing, once you guys have gotten that down, obviously slowly start ramping up the challengingness level, if that's an actual word. Um, I'll give you an example of that real quick uh, by doing a Montuno rhythm. If you guys aren't familiar with salsa music and whatnot, so a Montuno's, there's a bass line called a tumbao and the, the Montuno rhythm itself. So the tumbao, once it, once you hit the first downbeat, there are no more ones. It's all going to be on the uh of one, meaning the 16th note preceding the one. So it's syncopated or it's anticipating it by one 16th note. So one, two, three, four. That's it. Now, as far as the Montuno itself, it's like this. Four. Try to put them together, see if I can put them together. Two, three, four. Looks like I can, <laughs> I guess. Um, so my point is that, as far as what's going on and analyzing the uh, the relationships between, between the top part and the bottom part, are, it's going to be a lot more complex than doing a reggae thing because with reggae, the guitar part is just staying completely static as far as what's happening. Obviously, you don't have to keep it that way if you don't want to, uh, but for traditional reggae's sake, you want to do that. Um, so my point is just try to analyze with everything, whether you need to write it down as notation, as like little rhythmic grids, however you guys can, can or, or wish to do it, uh, might be beneficial for you to try. Um, so I leave you with that. And next time we'll talk about some more advanced concepts, I suppose, and uh, take these to a different level. Take it easy. Peace.